going to talk about how to install a servo on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Now, the servo that I have right here is a MG90S, and we're going to connect it to this board, but I need to review a couple of things. First of all, the wiring. So, if you look down here, you can see that the brown wire right here, this is actually going to be our ground. The wire in the center that looks orange is going to be our 5 volt line. And then the wire over here that's somewhat yellow is going to be our signal cable. Now over on the Big Tree Tech board, you can see that there's a port right here for the servo. Now the pins for this are as follows. Ground is right here. The center pin is voltage, and the pin on the right is our signal wire. So to connect this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to connect it right to this port, like so. I'm going to slide this right in, and that's all you need to do. So make sure that's nice and snug. Next thing I'm going to do is I actually need to program it. So I'm going to connect the big side of the USB to the board. And the small side I'm going to connect to the computer. And you may hear a beep. So as soon as we plugged in the USB serial cable, we got a USB drive. And as you can see, we have our firmware from our previous load on here. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. I'll show you more about this in a moment. But what I want to show you is the actual pins for the servo. They're located right over here. And as you can see, there's ground, voltage, and then signal pin right here. So what we need to do next is actually load the Marlin firmware. So we need to download it. So we're going to go to marlinfw.org. And we're going to click the download tab. And as you can see, there's several different firmwares listed. Now for the SKR version 1.4, it's a 32-bit board. So we need to use the version that's usable for 32-bit, which would be the 2.0 versions. So this is the latest release. But I'm going to actually use bug fix today, so I'm going to download that. And while that's downloading, I want to show you a little bit down here about other things in the project for Marlin, because it's open source. They have release notes. They also have reporting issues. And a lot of people ask questions about things that may not always be covered in the tutorial. So I just want to show you this real quick. Over here, if we go to issues, you can see what the daily issues or the last issues that have been opened are. And you can read through them if you so choose by just clicking on them. But uh, if you want to search on an issue, all you need to do is click on this. And for instance, TMC 2209. If you click enter, it'll show you the issues that are currently open and talk about what possible things might be occurring. So keep this in mind if you're interested in knowing what's going on, because sometimes I may not have all of the answers. So now that it's finished downloading, I'm going to click on Show in Folder. And inside here, I'm going to right click, then click on Extract, and I'm going to click the Extract button. And while that's extracting, let me say that no one is paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial and I purchased all of the equipment with my own money but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description so that you can either find it or help me out by purchasing something so now that this is almost finished what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up VS code so the quick way that I do it is I go to my start menu right here and I type VS and VS Code pops up for me. Now you may have it on your desktop, but that's okay. So now that it's finished extracting, I'm gonna open up VS Code. 
And since I've already had it open, it still has the folder structure. But if you need to open it, you can always go to open folder and map to the folder where it is. But in this case, I don't need to do it. So I'm not going to show it to you. So let's click on the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside boards.h, we have a couple of different chipsets. Now, the one that we're working with is the LPC-1768. So down here is our actual board because we're not using a turbo board. But if we were using a turbo board, it would actually be an LPC-1769, and it's right here. So I'm going to close out of this for a moment, and I'm going to click on configuration.h. Inside configuration.h, I'm going to do a search on motherboard and I'm going to highlight board underscore ramps underscore 14 underscore EFB and I'm going to paste what I just copied. Next, I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to change the serial port to negative one. And then to enable the servo, we need to do a search on num underscore servo. And that brings us to our servo. Currently, it's disabled with a comment. So we're going to remove the comment by backspacing. And then we only have one servo. So I'm going to change that to a 1 instead of a 3. This is normally designed for a ramps 1.4 that has four servos. So keep that in mind as to why I'm changing the number. And then down here, this is actually the time that it takes to actually move with the delay. So we can always change this to something greater, but for now we're gonna leave it to about just under a third of a second. So now we need to change platform io.ini for our default environment. And currently our default environment is the Mega 2560. That's not what we're using for our chipset. So we're gonna change that to LPC 1768. And then in order to actually compile or build this, we're gonna click on the upload button, which will compile or sometimes called build and then upload to our board. So I'm gonna click on that. Okay, now that compilation is completed, it says one succeeded in three minutes and 10 seconds. So let's double check. So you can see that the LPC 1768 succeeded. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna check the USB drive to make sure that it copied over, which it appears it has with firmware.bin. So in order to load this, what we need to do is remove the USB for a moment, then reconnect it. And as you can see, it just updated. Okay, now that we know it's loaded, I'm going to go to the desktop, the print run, then open up Pronerface. Inside Pronerface, I'm going to click on the connect button. And as you can see, it said connecting and printer is now online. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test to see what the firmware is by typing M115. And as you can see, it's the current build right here. But what we wanna do is we actually wanna move the servo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type M280. P0 for our first servo, and then the angle, which is going to be S, and we'll say 90 degrees. And I'm going to press enter. So it's moved 90 degrees. Now, if I want to move it back, let's see if we can do zero. So basically, we now know how to move the servo with the G code. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe and thank you for your time.